This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, this is the uh, the fourth and final lecture on um, the chapter on statement of financial position, statement of profit or loss. Uh, and oh, I hope you watched the earlier ones, but in the first uh, of the lectures. I went through a simple example looking at the um, effect of transactions, that every transaction had two effects, uh, and after each transaction we did produce a little, effectively a step to financial position, we listed the assets and we listed what the business owed. Um, in the second lecture I went through the layout, the, the pretty layout of a step to financial position. Remember, the big thing is splitting the assets between non-current and current, and similarly liabilities, non-current and current. Uh, and then in the last lecture, uh, similarly the layout of the statement of profit or loss, the pretty layout, where we're showing how much profit was made during the period. Uh, two final things in this uh, chapter, both of which are important. And the first is just a terminology thing. It's the um, bottom of the, well, it's paragraph five, where it says the difference between capital and revenue items. Uh, be careful here because the wording can be confusing. Uh, the point is, if you think back to the little example I did in the first lecture, um, we spent money for various reasons. Uh, we spent money buying a shop. Uh, we spent money buying a car. And there we were buying a non-current asset. Uh, and it appeared on the statement of financial position. Non-current assets, shop, car. However, we also spent money uh, buying goods for resale and paying expenses. We paid electricity. And that was rather different because paying electricity was an expense of running the business. We hadn't bought an asset. Uh, and that appeared in our statement of profit or loss as uh, an expense of running the business. It reduced the profit. Now they're both expenditure. Expenditure is spending money. But capital expenditure We call it capital expenditure when we're buying a non-current asset. A car, a shop, we say it's capital expenditure. And of course, these appear whoops, on the statement of financial position. For now, I'm going to use the abbreviation, the statement of financial position. Now that's capital expenditure. Uh, nothing to do with the word capital itself. Capital is um, money owed to the owner. Capital expenditure is when you're buying a non-current asset. On the other hand, revenue expenditure Again, expenditure, we're spending money, but revenue expenditure is when you're paying expenses. Um, like we paid uh, electricity, or we could have paid rent and so on, where you've not bought a non-current asset. There's no asset to appear on the step to financial position. It's a cost, again, of running the business. And this appears on the statement of profit or loss. It reduces the profit. Now, again, it's confusing. Uh, the word revenue itself is income, is sales. Revenue expenditure sounds very odd. You know, revenue... You're earning money, expenditure, you're spending money. So it does look odd, uh, but the reason it's called revenue expenditure is you're paying these expenses, you're paying electricity in order to be able to earn revenue. 
Uh, however, I'm afraid it's just technology you've got to learn, and you will be tested on it. Capital expenditure, you're buying non-current assets. Revenue expenditure, expenses that appear on the statement of financial position. Anyway, I said there were two things uh, uh, to finish off with. That was one. The next is uh, on the final page, um, the accounting equation. Now, although it's all typed up there, and effectively I'm going to be writing out what's typed up, <laughs> I need to because it is so important. Assuming you have watched earlier chapters, you should be happy by now that on the same the financial position, we're listing the assets, what's owned by the business, and always, at any point, they're equal to what the business owes, the capital plus the liabilities. So always what the business owns equals what the business owes. What the business owns are the assets, and what the business owes is the capital owed to the owner, uh, plus the liabilities, the money owed to other people. Now, I can be around that slightly differently if you subtract liabilities from both sides. The assets minus the liabilities at any point in time will equal the capital. You know, in that first example I went through, although everything kept changing, every time we did a statement, the assets equal the capital plus the liabilities, or every time we did it, assets minus liabilities equal the capital. Well, one more bit of terminology. Another word for assets minus liabilities is the net assets. And so there is the first of our accounting equations that always at any point in time, the net assets of the business will equal the total owed to the owner, the capital. However, again, think back to that first lecture. Although at each stage, those two were equal, they both kept changing. You know, before we even did the first transaction, net assets was zero, capital was zero. Uh, the owner put in 10,000. Ah, the net assets were 10,000. They had cash, but the capital was 10,000. So they keep changing, but at any point in time, the two are equal. Well, we can go one step further. Over a period, so whether we're looking over a month or we're looking over a year, these two will change. But the change, or the increase in the net assets, will equal the increase in the capital. Again, that first uh, example I went through, look back if you need, but at the very beginning, before we even started, Net assets was zero, capital was zero. By the very end, I can't remember the exact figures to be honest, but by the very end, the net assets were higher and the capital was higher. But they'll both change by the same amount. Finally though, why will the capital change? Why will the total owing to the owner change? There are only three reasons why the uh, total owing to the owner will change. One is because the business makes a profit. If the business makes a profit, there's more owing to the owner. Another reason is because of drawings. If the owner takes out money, there's less owing to the owner. The capital is lower. There's only one other reason why the total owing to the owner can change, and that is if they put in more money. 
We call it capital introduced. If the owner puts in more money, there's more owing to the owner. And of course, if they put in more money, there's more cash. So there's more net assets. And some people want to add on, oh, uh, fourth reason, a loss. Uh, no, a loss is simply a negative profit. Um, so we don't need to add on that, uh, another one. But the total loan to the owner, well, uh, there are only three reasons why it changes over the year or the month or whatever period. It'll go up because the business has made a profit and they're owed more. It goes down because the owner's taken out money, drawings, they're owed less. It goes up because the owner's put more money in, uh, the capital introduced. And there is the second accounting equation. And you must learn, well, must learn both of them, but especially that one. Uh, you're bound to be asked some questions, checking you uh, on that uh, accounting equation. And there are two examples here. Let's have a look at them. Example one. <coughs> on the 1st of January, <coughs> the net assets of a business were 25,000. On the 31st of December, they'd increased to 32,000. During the year, the owner had introduced more capital of 10,000 and has made drawings of 7,000. And we're asked, what's the profit? It's simply using this equation and obviously being careful. First of all, the increase in net assets. At the beginning of the year it was 25, at the end of the year it was 32. So the net assets have gone up by 7,000. And that must be equal to the profit, which is what we're trying to find, minus any drawings. Well, it tells us the drawings were 7,000. Plus any capital introduced. Well, they'd introduced more capital of 10,000. We want the profit, it's the missing figure. Now, I don't know, some of you will be able to write it straight down, but for everybody's benefit, 7,000 is the profit. Well, minus 7 plus 10 is plus 3,000. And finally, if we subtract 3,000 from both sides, 7,000 minus 3,000 is 4,000. The profit is 4,000. So it's not hard, provided, of course, you've learnt the accounting equation, uh, and otherwise it's just being careful. Obviously, when you're doing anything in a rush, you can make silly mistakes, um, but that's practice. Now, there's a second example. I don't know, it might be, I'm going to work through it, but it may be a good idea if you pause this lecture, did it yourself, and then restart the lecture and check you got it right. However, I'll go straight on with it. Uh, on 1st of January, the net assets were 118,000. On 31st December, they were 150. So I'll start going immediately. Uh, the increase in net assets, 150 minus 118, is 32,000. It's equal to... The profit, we know the profit here, 54,000. Minus the drawings. That's what we're trying to find. Plus the capital introduced. Well, there's been no additional capital. So again, it's now just simple algebra. If you add drawings to both sides, so drawings plus 32 is 54. If you subtract 32 from both sides, the drawings are 22,000. So I say again, not hard, but do make sure. Check you've learnt it and check you're happy why. 
you know, don't just learn an equation. I hope I've made sense of it. If I haven't, go back through the earlier lectures. But otherwise, it's just practice and speed. Uh, and I say again, do practice because even if you find it really easy, it's when you're rushing that you make stupid mistakes. And, uh, you know, and there are harder things to come. You want to make sure that uh, what should be easy things, that you are getting right and getting the marks. Okay, well, that's all of that. Um, just to introduce what's coming next, though. In the little example I did at the beginning of this chapter, every transaction, after each transaction, we produced a little statement of financial position. Now, of course, in practice, that would be ridiculous for two reasons. Firstly, we're not required to keep producing a statement of financial position. It's something we do once a year or maybe once a month, not after every transaction. And secondly, in real life, it would be impossible to do it after every transaction anyway. You know, you'll be thousands of transactions a day. You can't keep stopping. Ooh, let's now do a step to financial position. Then two minutes later, let's do it again. It would be insane. And so, in fact, we don't. We only produce those statements, as I've said, certainly once a year, possibly once a month. But we do need to have recorded each transaction as it happens. So uh, what we're going to do, and I'll explain how in the next chapter, is every time there's a transaction, day by day, we will make a record. But only at the end of the period will we then take the information from the records and actually produce our statements. So the next chapter will be showing how, well, we're going to do a lot in the next chapter, but I'll show how we actually record each transaction and how we then take our records at the end of the period uh, to be able to produce these statements. But that's the next chapter.